Welcome back everyone. In addition to the base iPhone 12 models, Apple unveiled a new small form factor smartphone, the iPhone 12 mini. With a retail price of $699 for the mini, is there anything this device has to offer over previous entries in the iOS small form factor lineup? For the kind of person who would be inclined to buy a small form factor smartphone, why exactly would they want to purchase the full priced iPhone 12 mini when they could comparably get an iPhone 8 instead for a similar experience for as low as $249? In this video, I will go over the most significant differences between the two devices to measure the improvements between Apple's refreshed small form factor device and their 2017 Champion, which is not only still going strong, but also a hot commodity on the used market, with prices becoming more affordable each day. If you are looking for an affordable used phone, click the link in the description to pick up your own iPhone 8 or better on UptradeIt.com, the best resource to buy and sell used phones under expert inspection and supervision. Now, let's go over the details of the iPhone 12 mini and see what advantages it has over past mini-sized phones. Apple has found themselves in a peculiar situation where they have released a mini-sized phone that has a bigger screen than the small versions of their previous lineup. The iPhone 12 mini screen is 5.4 inches across with a resolution of 2340 by 1080p with 475 ppi. Compared to the last numbered release in small form factor, the iPhone 8 has a 4.7 inch screen in 1334 by 740p with a 326 ppi. In addition to the denser screen, the size of the phone has also very slightly decreased from years past mini sized phones. The Mini comes in at 2.53 inches wide and 5.18 inches tall versus the 2.65 inches by 5.45 inches iPhone 8. This is quite impressive technology considering the size, but will it be noticeable? In terms of the size, we're talking about a difference in tenths of an inch. And in terms of screen resolution, the increased density may not even be visible. For example, the massive screen found on the iPhone 12 Pro Max needs extra pixel density and resolution because the same amount of pixels across a bigger screen will decrease the graphical fidelity. However, for small form factor phones, Apple used to be satisfied with 326 ppi, which meets the criteria to be considered retina, because the display is small enough to not necessitate the increased pixel density. Furthermore, the small phone market is especially niche. The phones exist for people who specifically want the smaller screen, usually people who prefer the base functionality of sending some emails and texts and playing music. Intrinsically, people who want mini-sized phones are not interested in consuming visual media. I am under the impression that while the engineering quality of the iPhone 12 mini is miraculous, this is not the product that this niche market wants. But what about the new CPU? The iPhone 8 is using the A11 Bionic chip with 2GB of RAM. While it's named iPhone 8, keep in mind that this is the same flagship CPU found in the iPhone 10, as both phones were released in 2017. The iPhone 12 will have Apple's latest chip, the A14, and a speculated 4GB of RAM. While it is natural that the iPhone 12 will be significantly more powerful than the iPhone 8, I don't see the intended audience using this additional power during web browsing, checking emails, and loading social media. The A11 chip was cutting edge technology just three years ago and to this day outcompetes certain Android flagships in performance. For these reasons, the user experience between the two devices in terms of speed may not be all that different. After all, this phone wasn't made for the hardcore gamers. It's more representative of a minimalist, bare bones, utilitarian consumer. Photo quality and cameras. The iPhone 12 mini has two cameras, both at 12 megapixels, one lens for typical shots and one ultra wide angle lens for the ability to zoom even further out. The iPhone 8 has a similar standard 12 megapixel lens. The iPhone 12 mini undoubtedly has the upper edge with the additional feature and due to improvements in software and camera design, the 12 mini will also take better photos in dark spaces. While the upgrades are welcome again, for a phone designed for people who are not focused on visual media, this edition may miss its mark. Battery life. The iPhone 8 has an 1821 milliamp hour battery with a reported 13 hours of video playback time. The 12 mini has a 2227 milliamp hour battery and a reported 15 hours of video playback. This is impressive and thanks to the improved CPU efficiency and battery technology, 
the iPhone 12 mini has an additional two hours of theoretical usage. However, due to background processes and the way apps remain active in the background, I don't think either phone will last two days between charges, even for extremely light users unless additional apps are left uninstalled. Data speed. This is iPhone 12's key upgrade. The iPhone 12 series will be the first iPhones to be compatible with 5G technology. Ideally, you're going to have a 4 gigabit per second download speed and 200 megabits per second upload. However, keep in mind, 5G is only enabled in select small locations like an airport or stadium, and is also limited from carrier to carrier. This is due to current 5G technology that only lets the network be broadcast to very small locations at a time. While this is a step in the right direction for the future, consumers who buy the 12 series today will likely not be able to take advantage of this new technology until it is widely available all over the United States. When all is said and done, it was nice to see Apple consider the subset of users who prefer the simplicity of iOS while modernizing the small form design. But I'm afraid that a price of $699 will detract from the upgrades present since consumers may largely be paying for a product whose features they will not use. When considering the target audience of these phones, I am extremely confident in recommending the iPhone 8 over the iPhone 12 mini to someone who wants a simple user experience with reliable and proven hardware. There's simply no need to pay a premium for features you won't use, and you absolutely won't have to spend $699 for a modern experience, as high quality, lightly used iPhone 8s are currently selling for less than $250. If you're looking to upgrade your phone at a fraction of the price, click the link in the description to buy an expert inspected, fully functional phone as if it were brand new. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.